In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, a blessed and joy-filled Easter greeting to you all. It's wonderful to be here on this Easter morning and to celebrate that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And 2,000 plus years later, we gather on this Easter morning to celebrate that despite our best or maybe not so great efforts, God comes to take away anything that comes between us and life with him, especially death itself. This act of God, this generous act of love in the Father raising the Son from the dead for us all, we celebrate with great amazement and thanks today. So good to be here with you to celebrate this today at St. Paul's Co-Cathedral. And so as we move into this wonderful liturgy today, we will renew our baptismal promises uh, after the homily, and so we, we will leave the penitential rite and move right into the Gloria. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak. You know the message that spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God appointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were opposed or oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. 
All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb they had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance or to the tomb. When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they had laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Through the words of the Gospel, may our sins be washed away. As I come to you this morning, probably like many of you, including uh, the clergy and religious and many of the laity who meditate on the liturgy of the hours over the Easter Triduum, I was struck by the reading yesterday morning, the ancient Holy Saturday homily as it's entitled in the liturgy of the hours. What is happening? Today there is a great silence over the earth, a great silence, a stillness, a great silence because the king sleeps. The earth was in terror as was still because God slept in the flesh and raised up those who were sleeping. From the ages, God has died in the flesh and the underworld trembles. For you, I, your God, became your son. For you, I, the master, took on your form, that of a slave for you. I, who am above the heavens, came on earth and under the earth. For you, man, I became as a man, without help, free among the dead, for you who left a garden. Today we celebrate the great act of God who responds to us because we left the garden, which was not God's doing, it was ours. And 
God's response to sin that was humanity's failing, despite so much blessing, is the greatest miracle the world has and will ever see. Arise, let us go hence. The enemy brought you out of the land of paradise. I will reinstate you, no longer in paradise, but on the throne of heaven. I denied you the tree of life, which was a figure, but now I myself am united to you, I who am life. The other passage that comes the, today, actually, in the Liturgy of the Hours, I'm always moved by it, and I just read a small part, comes from John Chrysostom, where he says the following about the Easter event. Let no one lament persistent feeling, failings, for forgiveness has risen from the grave. Let no one fear death, for the death of our Savior has set us free. The Lord has destroyed death by enduring it. The Lord vanquished hell when he descended into it. The Lord put hell in turmoil even as it tasted his flesh. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, hell, where is your victory? You know, at the end of a, a year in which we've dealt with what many call an unprecedented event since the great wars of the last century, the pandemic has affected an, all of us in so many ways that we never would have anticipated. And it's gone on for a while. You know, people can cope for a few months or maybe even a half a year, but this has been a year plus. And yet, <laughs> in the midst of a pandemic, or whatever calamity happens in the world, Easter comes. <laughs> the resurrection of Jesus Christ happens, no matter what, the gift of God. And no matter what we try to do, and we know our failings as well as our uh, ways that we've made great strides in human history, despite the failure, God comes. The greatest act the world has ever seen is Jesus Christ, who suffers and dies, the only guiltless one on his cross, and then the Father in heaven raises his Son, the only guiltless one, to everlasting life, doing what God could only do, burst the gates of death and any obstacle that could come between us and the love of God. Wow. So after all is said and done, we celebrate he is risen, and that is an act of God, God's generous miracle for us. And we gather and we work and we strive to be a people of the Lord. Uh, after all is said and done, God is absolutely gracious and generous. Father Penna briefly told me about the great celebration of receiving catechumens last evening here at St. Paul's. Uh, I'm grateful that I had the privilege of receiving the catechumens early on in the Lenten season. And we prayed for them at Holy Family Cathedral and all our catechumens of the diocese last evening. It's also wonderful. It's a, quite a liturgical, spiritual workout to do all of the readings at, at the Easter Vigil. And we did all of the readings that recall from the Holy Bible the significant times in salvation history. God created humanity to be the height of his creation. And yet the moment he risked giving us free will, we took that and for a moment we wanted more. We cast off what God created us to bless us with, we wanted not to embrace his gift, but to be like him in a poor way, to, to have what God has, but we're humanity, and so we sin. And yet since the fall, God has been relentless in calling his people back. And the prophets of the Old Testament speak over and over and over of God's promise to bring us back. We recalled in one of the readings last evening the, the great Exodus story, which I'm always impressed with, highlights one particular feature amongst many. The people were escaping slavery from the Egyptian oppressors. They had known oppression and slavery and called for freedom with God's help. 
and they saw extraordinary ways that God intervened to free them. And yet, on the unknown journey to a new future of freedom, with God's blessing and with full reliance on that, they still were tempted to go back to the slavery they knew, especially when they were thirsty, the road was dry and rocky, and the absolute future, which doesn't sort of absolutely have the same clarity as the slavery they knew, was tempting to embrace again. What this revealed, again, is the greatest slavery, the greatest oppressor, is not out there, but is in here. Many Christian authors over the centuries have reflected on this slavery. I, I briefly recall the quote of C.S. Lewis, who said the following about this issue of the oppressor within. Speaking about looking away from God, he said the following, out of that hopeless attempt has come nearly all we call human history, money, poverty, ambition, wars, prostitution, classes, empires, slavery, addiction, the long, terrible story of man trying to find something other than God which will make him happy. Lewis also talked about the need to be directed by our heart and soul where God resides in us. But one of the worst results of being a slave and being forced to do things is that when there is no one to force you anymore, you find you have lost the power of directing, of forcing yourself. Isaiah 54 last evening. O oh, afflicted one, storm-tossed, not comforted, I am about to set your stones in antimony and lay your foundation with sapphires. The great image from the prophet Isaiah of the real foundation that was coming to the world and the redeemed. A foundation that is foreshadowed by the, the great temple, but ultimately God in Jesus Christ is that temple. I love the prophet Ezekiel, we heard last evening as well, would come right into the marrow of our being. O Israel, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit, making and taking from your heart of stone and giving you a heart of flesh. Wow. And so we hear early in the morning of this day the testimony of the Acts of the Apostles, our first reading, in which God, who was anointed, Jesus Christ with the power of the Holy Spirit, who was put to death by hanging on a tree, has been raised up. All who believe in him receive forgiveness, mercy, and new life. Wow. Also, Paul's letter to the Colossians, where Christ is raised, and our lives here are oriented from above. We seek God's blessing who comes to us from above to guide and bless our lives now, to give us hope amidst any difficulty, to show us the way of peace and shalom in the midst of wars and destructions, and to again, with his grace and blessing, make our heart of stone that in any way has that hardness into a heart of flesh to receive his life. We heard about the stone rolled back in the gospel. Pope Francis a few hours ago said the following about the stone and its symbolism for the rock in our hearts. He said the following, even from the rubble of our hearts, each of us knows, knows the rubble of his or her own heart. From the rubble of our hearts, God can create a work of art. From the ruined remnants of our humanity, God can prepare a new history. He never ceases to go ahead of us. In the cross of suffering, desolation, and death, and in the glory of a life that rises again, a history that changes, a hope that is reborn. In these dark months of the pandemic, the Holy Father concludes, let us listen to the risen Lord as he invites us to begin anew. Never, 
never lose hope. These simple words from the Holy Father are, are certainly are, are prophetic in this time. He also directs us, as he did last year actually, he has a real interest in the meaning of the scriptures about going to Galilee upon his resurrection. The Pope says the following about directing our lives to a hope that is real, concrete, and directed right now to the good news of God blessing our lives. Now, he said the following, going to Galilee on the other hand means realizing that faith, if it is to be alive, must get back on the road. It must daily renew the first steps of the journey, the amazement of the first encounter with the Lord. And it must continue to trust, not thinking it already knows everything, but embracing the, with humility those who let themselves be surprised in God's way. Let us not be, us, let us not be afraid of God's surprises. And so, brothers and sisters, let us not be afraid of God's surprises. Let us continue to allow the call to freedom and life and life to abundance take us on a renewed journey every day. Every Easter is an opportunity for new conversion, a deeper repentance, and an awareness that God's light illumines all darkness and the gray as well. Yes, despite our greatest efforts, we just couldn't do it, not alone. And on this Easter morning, we give praise and thanks to God for doing something we couldn't do, and that is to absolutely confront any obstacle to our human flourishing, especially that which causes us the most fear and destruction, and to take that on himself on his cross. The salvation that we celebrate this Easter and all Easter's is through the wood of the cross of Jesus Christ. Let us never be afraid of that cross. Let us embrace that cross because after every Good Friday, Easter Sunday comes. A blessed Easter season to you all. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come now to the renewal of our baptismal promises. The light of the Christ candle will be spread amongst us. And when we proclaim, I do, I invite you to lift your candles up. I can hold it for you.
Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew our promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you if you could respond, I do, to the following questions. Do you reject, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Let's go down. Yeah, sorry. Of course. Let us now bring before God our prayers and petitions. That the resurrection of Christ will endow the church with new life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the power of Christ's resurrection will give us freedom and joy especially in relationships and situations in which we struggle, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the graces of Easter will bring wisdom and courage to our Queen, Prime Minister, our Premier, our Mayor, and all civil authorities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those baptized and confirmed during the vigil here and across the world will flourish in their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that all those who are sick, especially those confined to care homes and those struggling with the effects of the pandemic, will experience in their bodies the victory of Christ's empty tomb. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who have died, especially members of our parish family who died this last year, may share in the joy of Christ's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Almighty God, source of all blessing, hear all our prayers, spoken and known by you in the depths of our hearts. On this Easter morn, we give thanks to you, Almighty God, for this great miracle of your resurrection and love for the world. And we make all these prayers with Mary, our mother, in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice 
by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sanctified. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles, martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of, of that, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. 
Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was about to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. Body of Christ, the blessing of the Lord. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Sorry. Let us conclude our prayer. Let us pray. 
look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ is risen, alleluia. Oh, that didn't, I need louder than that. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen, alleluia. Le Christ est ressuscité, alleluia. Alleluia. Christos anesti, alithos anesti, alleluia. Alleluia. Christus resurrexit, vere surrexit Christus. Alleluia. Christos vos cres, vos novos cres. Alleluia. Christus smart vivstau. As zaiste smart vivstau. Alleluia. Masia. Masia ha masia com. Be emet com. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Indeed, he is risen. Alleluia. And so your people greet you, Bishop. Thank you for leading us in these sacred mysteries. Thank you for being the one who has said yes to being with the apostles in going to the nations and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is Lord. I would like you, Bishop, to see that amongst us today are our neophytes those just baptized, whom I'm going to ask to stand. And if I miss anyone, wave at me. Alexander, Ryan, Enzo, Anne Min. I saw Perry here a minute ago. Where's Perry? Over there in the corner. Shivani. Is that everybody? Did I miss everyone? Let us praise God for these, our newborn brothers and sisters. I was told that people watching last night were weeping for joy at the smile on all of your faces as the waters of new life poured over you. Bishop, may those waters continue to pour over you. And from your generous heart, take that water to all those you meet this year and always. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen. My congratulations to the uh, catechumens, now neophytes. Uh, I, it was a real honor to be able to receive you uh, early on here at St. Paul's. Uh, blessings on your journey. It's only just begun. And uh, look to us to continue to be your support. And uh, we will look to you on your journey as you will support us as well. Uh, wonderful to celebrate on this Easter day with you. Let us stand and conclude our prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our Lady. 
Regina Celi, Lettera Re, Alleluia, Qui Thank you. 